we're going to be covering chapter 5.2, 3, and 5.5. So you may be wondering why we're skipping 5.4, but I'm actually going to be going over it in a separate video because these three deal with polynomials, specifically adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So 5.2 is evaluate and graph polynomial functions. Now, a polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials, and this will become more clear in our table here of polynomial functions. The first has a degree of zero, a degree being, once again, as we know, like x to the second has um, two degrees, x is just one degree, x to the third is three degrees. So the first type is constant, and it's just that, a constant. The second is linear with one degree, so one degree here. The second is quadratic, then cubic, then quartic. So a polynomial, these are all polynomials. We could see a polynomial in any of the forms of 5x plus 1 or 17x to the third minus 2x squared plus 1, etc. So synthetic substitution is another way we can do substitution other than this regular way, which is what we have been doing before, in which we have the directions to evaluate x squared plus 4 for x equals 2. So we're plugging 2 in, or substituting 2 for our x value. So we would be something like 2 squared plus 4, etc., and then solve it. Next, we're going to be using synthetic substitution which is helpful for longer problems such as this. We don't want to completely write out our substitution like we did before. Because if we were told, for example, to substitute 5x plus 24, and we had to substitute that every time we had an x, and then raise it to a certain power, that would take too, too much time. So we're going to be using synthetic substitution. This problem says to evaluate f of x when x equals 3. So f of x is this here, 2x to the 4th minus 5x to the 3rd minus 4x plus 8. So our first step is we're going to draw this kind of L-shaped line, you could say. And we're going to put our substituting value, which is 3 in this case, on the left side. We're going to write the constants of each of, each of these here. So we have 2 negative 5, negative 4, and 8. But we need to be careful when writing them down. So when we have, we have 2, negative 5, and notice how these are going in descending order, in order of their degree. But now we go from x to the third to just x. We need to put 0 for our x squared value. So 0, then we will continue with negative 4, and 8. So it doesn't really um, become clear as to what we're doing with these values until you just bring down the 2. So first we're going to bring down the 2, and then we can easily look from this value to this value, multiply them together, so we write the product here under the next value, add those together, so negative 5 plus 6, which is 1. Once again we're going to multiply by 3, so this value and this value, which is 3. Once again we're adding and then multiplying, and adding, and multiplying, and adding. So f of 3, because we've been told to evaluate this function when x is 3, f of 3 is 23. So section 3 is add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. So we're going to start with adding. So we have 2x to the third minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 9, and we're adding another polynomial, which is x to the third plus 6x squared plus 11. So this is fairly simple. We're going to line these up. So we're going to put this one below the first one. But we need to be careful that I actually didn't do this that well. I can fix it, but 
We're lining each of the values up with the same degree, or the same type of value. So we have our cubed values, our squared. We have no simple const or linear value. You guys can't, you can't really say that except for equations, but we have no simple x value, so we're leaving a space here. And then we just add them. So we have 3x to the third plus x squared plus 3x plus 2. Next, we're going to subtract. Now, you can kind of think of this as adding the opposite, in which it takes the same form as our addition problem, except we have a negative sign, which we're going to be then applying to each of our values in the second polynomial. So we're going to be multiplying this out. So we really just have a addition problem in which we've distributed a negative sign. So negative 3x to the third minus 2x squared plus x minus 7. And then once again, we're just going to add. So our final answer is 5x to the third minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 7. Our third problem is a multiplication problem. And we're going to treat it like it's a FOIL problem with these first two values. And then we're going to multiply this third one. So x times x, x squared plus x minus 5x minus 5. Simplify that to be um, this would be minus 4x, so minus 4x minus 5. And then we're going to multiply the third value. So we really just need to approach the problem using only some of them to begin with. So x to the third plus 3x squared. So x to the third x squared minus 4x squared minus 12x minus 5x minus 15. And our final answer is x to the third minus x squared minus 17x minus 15. So section 5 is titled Apply the Remainder in Factor Theorem but it really just deals with division of polynomials. We're going to start with polynomial long division. So we're told to divide f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 5x to the third plus 4x minus six by x squared minus 3x plus five. So this is really going to be set up just as a big division problem. 3x to the fourth minus 5x to the third plus 0x squared. I'll actually write that so it's clear. But like before, in our substitution, we need to leave a space for our x squared value, which we do not have. So the first thing we need to do is find by what can we multiply x squared so that it equals 3x to the fourth. So we can multiply x squared by 3x squared, and we're going to put this above our x squared value. So we have 3x to the fourth. Multiply 3x squared by all these values. So next we're going to have minus 9x to the third plus 15x squared. And we're going to subtract this value from the one above it. So we're really again just going to be multiplying a negative sign. So these cancel out we have negative 5x to the third plus 9x to the third, so 4x to the third, minus 15x squared. And now we're going to do the same thing with our 4x x to the third value. What can we multiply x squared by to get 4x to the third? So we can multiply it by 4x. 4x to the third minus 12x squared plus 20x. We can bring down the 4x from above. negative 15x squared plus 12x squared, negative 3x squared, and then we have 4x minus 20x, so minus 16x minus 6. We're going to do the same thing for this problem, minus 3, minus 3x squared plus 9x minus 15. 
So we have negative 16x minus 9x, so negative 25x. And then negative 6 plus 15x, so plus 11. So our answer will be, we have on the top, we have this value, so 3x squared plus 4x minus 3. And then this is our remainder on the bottom. We have plus negative 25x plus 11 over x squared minus 3x plus 5, which is from here. So we need to put that as our denominator because it's a remainder, and this is our final answer. Now, dividing like that will take a long time if you have several degrees or parts to your polynomial. Synthetic division is something that we can do that is much faster and is very similar to synthetic substitution. So we're going to just set this up similarly. We have, instead of just having a constant by which we're dividing, we have x plus 3. This is actually x minus negative 3. So we're going to put negative 3 on this side of our L shape. And then we're going to bring down, once again, our constants. And then we're going to go through the same steps as we did before. So negative 6, negative 5, 15, 7, negative 21, and negative 16. And these are going to be the constants of our answer. So if you bring these all down, we get 2x squared minus 5x plus 7. And our negative 16 is our remainder. And clearly that took much faster than our previous problem with long division.